Did everybody get the worksheets for this month? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, okay. So here we go. All right, so we, uh, this month we're gonna cover cat care um, and talk about how we should care for our cats a little. I think it looked like everybody who's on has been on before. So you all probably filled out that registration form. Is that right? Okay. So, like I said, this month we're gonna talk about cat care. We're gonna talk um, about keeping our cats happy and safe and healthy and just some basic things we would want to know uh, in regards to providing a good environment for our cats. Um, and so we're going to talk a little bit about different things that would make an environment cat friendly as well as types of enrichment for our cat and some things to think about uh, in regards to grooming our cat. So we're going to start first by talking about what makes a cat friendly environment or what makes some good things in your house to consider um, making your house better for keeping cat friendly. Um, so we're gonna start thinking about like safety things that we would do in our house, right? So our house should be um, cat proof, right? Cat safe. Um, and that there shouldn't be anything that's dangerous in our house, right? They're gonna protect our house and make sure that they're safe. Um, so thinking about where we put stuff in our house where a cat can't get to them, like poisons or different things, um, as well as potential plants or chemicals or certain foods, right? I don't know about all of you guys, right? But we wanna think about removing like breakable things or putting their, them when they're somewhere safe. You know, I don't know if you guys have all put away your Christmas trees, but maybe if you had one up, your cat maybe knocked some ornaments down or potentially broke ornaments. Natalie said her cat never did. My cat knocks the ornaments out of the tree and then smacks them around the house. So right, thinking about things um, that we be breakable that we might wanna put up. Does anybody, um, I'm gonna open up the chat, but does anybody in here have cats that maybe get into things that, Natalie does. What does your cat get into? Uh, Just stuff. Anybody cat, else have? My cat lives outside. Yours lives outside? My cat gets into everything. My cat could get into the um, food bin, eat everything. Yeah. Our cats climb the Christmas tree. Yeah, mine likes to, like to sleep in it. Um, so we want to think about things that might be dangerous in our house, right? So um, in particular, we're talking about chemicals, certain plants, as well as some other kind of hazards you might find uh, in your house. Um, so one thing is uh, chemicals, right? Cats, um, some chemicals they just have to eat, a, consume a little bit or eat a little bit of and it'll make them sick. Um, so we want to make sure that all the chemicals that are in our house get locked up. And that if something would spill that might be dangerous, that we can clean it up right away, that our cats won't get into it. Um, cats are curious and they're gonna lick things that they maybe shouldn't get into. Um, some chemicals might taste good to cats um, that, we would, that would be bad for them. So we wanna make sure that um, we're paying attention and they're not getting into things. Uh, so certain chemicals, some examples of things that might be bad for your cat would be like different cleaners that you use or pest control products, right? Like if you're spraying for bugs or different things. Uh, some makeups or cosmetics, as well as medicines that maybe you take or you have for other animals you wouldn't want your cat to get into. Um, make sure, right, if you're giving your cat medicines, they're ones that are specific for your cat and given in the right dose, right, that we're not giving them something um, that they shouldn't have and that anything they aren't allowed to have gets put away. Uh, in addition, uh, some other issues would be like plants, right? Some plants are good, some are toxic. Um, the ASPCA has a big list of plants that are safe or not safe for your cat, so it's a good place to look if you're not sure, um, right? But you can find some different common household plants that would be toxic um, to your cat, so you wanna pay attention, right? Um, if you have a plant that's toxic, you'd wanna put it where your cat might not get into it um, to make sure they're safe. Grass, grass is safe for your cat, right? A lot of you probably have cats that eat grass, or maybe you buy, you can buy that cat grass at the store for them. My cats eat grass all the time. Yeah. My cat too. 
Um, and then there's lots of other like hazards or things that might be concerning in our house that we want to pay attention to, right? So there's lots of objects in your house that could be dangerous maybe to your cat. Um, and so you want to make sure we're paying attention to those and making sure cats are safe. Um, you know, maybe your cat gets into the dryer if you leave the door open because the clothes are warm and they go lay in there to sit, right? So we always want to make sure that our cats, you know, aren't getting into the dryer and are safe, right, when we're drying our clothes. Um, and so check those. You want to um, watch for electrical cords, things that maybe your cat would play with or chew on um, and put, make sure those are safe somewhere in your house. Um, and then, right, thinking about like the stovetop or things that are hot in your kitchen, right? Um, some of you have cats that get on your kitchen counters. My cat does when we're not paying attention. He likes to throw food off the kitchen counter down to the floor for the dogs. So they've figured that out, right? So some of you might have those kinds of things. You want to make sure that they can't get on something hot, right, that they could get injured. Um, also things like the trash can, right? So making sure they can't get into the trash can and eat things they're not supposed to um, or even making a mess, right, um, is important. So we have to think about those hazards in our house that our cat might get into. Um, and then obviously, right, being outside can be a big hazard to our cats. Um, and so we want to make sure we're keeping them safe um, and, you know, inside is obviously safer than outside for cats. Outdoor cats tend to live a shorter life than ones that are kept indoors. Um, outside, there's lots of things like other animals, like dogs and cats, um, or snakes, or different things they can get into, um, as well as different hazards like cars and um, different chemicals that are out there. And so we want to make sure that our cats are safe if they're going to be outside. Uh, lastly, right, cats like stability in their environment. They don't like surprises. Yeah, that, that, that really shocked face, right? Uh, and so um, cats really like a routine and being stuck to, and so they don't like big changes in their house. Um, and so make sure, right, that you stick to rules, you keep the routine for your cat. And if you move, right, that you don't maybe move things around too much um, if your cat gets kind of freaked out by it. Um, and so make sure, you know, you give your cat some time. Um, and you give it some alone time too, right, where they maybe don't want attention all the time or they have a place to go that's away from people. Um, right, so changes in your cat's routine or changes in their environment lead to behavioral problems. Um, and so some things that might make your cat upset would be things like moving to a new house. So if we do that, right, we want to make sure that we retrain our cats to that house if we move. Um, or even things like adding a new family member or getting a pet, right, those can make your cat upset um, and so watching for those things when you add um, someone new you got a fish usually they're okay with fish especially if they can like watch the fish in the tank cats like those um, but maybe not another cat right or a dog um, and even things like if you guys have a lot of friends over right or you're having a party that might scare your cat so they might not want to come out right your cat might hide you're your sides, yeah. So, you know, things things like that might upset your cats. Um, and so one of the big problems, right, if your cat's routine gets thrown off is that they can do things like maybe stop using the litter box or have other issues. And so um, make sure um, if you notice your cat having behavior problems, we ask and check to make sure everything is okay. All right, so we want to create stability in our cat's life through having a routine. So make sure we're doing things kind of at the same time every day, like feeding them around the same time. Maybe we groom them or we play, you know, when you get home from school, that you have a set routine with them. And so that schedule is important for your cat. Um, and so trying to spend time with it every day um, and taking care of it at similar times is important. Um, and so making sure your schedule matches your cat's schedule is a good thing to do. Like, so maybe if you stayed up really late one night, then you're late in the morning feeding your cat, you know, that might upset them. And so watching that routine is important. Okay, so that brings us to our first worksheet, our first activity. Um, and so that one is the where's the danger one. So it's got a picture um, of some different things. And so why don't you circle the things that could be dangerous to a cat that are in that room or mark those, look at those and we'll kind of come, we'll talk about what things you guys come up with that might be dangerous for your cat.
And let me know when you guys get that finished up. I'm done. Okay, got one done. All right, what's one thing you found that you thought could be dangerous to your cat? The bleach. The bleach, yep, that's a good one. What? Okay, the two girls here thought the dog could be dangerous to the cat, right, if the dog doesn't like cats? The trash. The trash, yep, and then I got the TV cord here, right, because it's loose. So it's trash, the bleach, the cord, and the dog. Anything else? The milk. Yeah, the milk on the couch. Yeah, because cats are lactose intolerant, so that milk might make them sick. The TV about, if your cat knocks it over. What about tooth loss? And what about what thing? Floss. Floss, yeah. If there was, I don't think I see floss in the picture, but yeah, if your cat were to eat floss, that could be bad. I heard on this vet say a cat almost died from choking on floss. Oh man, what do you think about like there's that medicine right down at the on the floor by the dog and the cat, so that medicine would be bad. The plant, the plant could be bad. Yep. The glass of liquid drink. Yeah, whatever stuff. that drink is, right? We don't know what's in their glass. So that could be bad. All right, good job. Those are all some things that we might want to think about with our cat, making sure they stay safe. All right, so the next thing we want to talk about in like your cat's home or environment, right, is their in what we call enrichment, right? So um, enrichment is things that we can do that help keep your cat's mind um, active and so it helps keep them stimulated mentally right if they sat in a room with nothing in it all the time they wouldn't be very mentally excited and so we want to give them the opportunity um, through enrichment and so there's a whole bunch of different things that we can give our cats um, that will provide some enrichment um, and those would be things right like toys or interactive feeders different sights or smells um, you know petting your cat and handling it um, doing things like that cat grass that I mentioned right um, all of those things, activities, think trees, right? If you guys have one of those scratching pads or training, um, all of those could be some examples. I'm going to um, open that chat box maybe so then the girls here can, can see what you're saying too. Um, but um, do you guys have, why don't you go ahead and type in the chat box some things that maybe you already do at your house that give your cat enrichment, okay? Just all put our cats on those screens. I know we can't. I can't bring mine in. His, he would freak out. Oh, do they? Okay. So, what are some things? Okay, we got it. That you play with your cats. What kinds of things do you guys have that enrich your cat's life? Bouncy balls. Do you guys have like a a juice bottle that you made? Anybody else have like a um, a ball track? Yeah, scratching things, yeah, up and like cat trees, right? Those, oh yeah, for the presentation. Yeah, cool. Um, one of the things that's important when we think about cat enrichment, too, is thinking about like using their different senses, right? So like the sense of taste and touch and smell um, and, and what are your other senses? Hearing, right? So sound, so we can do different things, vision, so that they can do um, a, dang, a toy like dangling from a stick that your cat's like, yeah. All right, so lots of good ideas for things that we could do. So a lot of you kind of mentioned that you played with your cat, right? And so playing with your cat um, is fun for you, but it also is a good uh, source of enrichment, right? And so it helps keep your cat from getting bored. Um, and you can buy them different toys and things to do, and it helps you to bond with your cat and gives them uh, good exercise. Um, and so one of the things to remember, though, right, is that cats have pretty short attention spans, so they only maybe play for a little bit at a time before 
uh, they get bored or go do something else. And so um, if you should be able to find a few minutes every day to play with your cat. My cat got a new toy for Christmas. It's a little mouse that moves around, but he's scared of it. So he was kind of freaked out by his mouse that walked around. But he did, well, he likes to play with a dog's bones too, so, right? So um, you, oh, you guys mentioned toys, right? So there's lots of different types of toys your cat can play with, and there's toys you can buy at the pet store. And so lots of things somebody mentioned, right? They had one from a string or like a wand, right? Or feathers, um, you can get catnip filled toys, right? So there's lots of different things. Um, but also you guys can make some toys for your cat. So I think one of you, Adriana, maybe somebody said that they had made a, a uh, toy for their cat already in the past. Natalie said she's made a toy for her cat. Um, so you guys can make toys for your cats at home too, um, doing things with like bags or boxes, right, or foil, right, so we can make some different toys. My cat really just likes bags and boxes, right, if we leave those out, those are exciting uh, toys all the time for them. Right, so we can get lots of different options of toys. You can find all kinds of different things. So. You know, playing with your cat, trying different stuff, you can see what they like more than others. So I just wanted to mention, right, that it is um, also good. You can make lots of cat toys at home. So if you want to try to make your own, there's some different things that you can do. Um, one uh, easy toy you can make is this example here. So you can make um, cat toys like a cat ball out of toilet paper roll so they can bat it around and chew on it and play with it. And if they throw, destroy it, right, you'll get another toilet paper roll soon enough, right? They can make them a new one. Um, yeah, you could put a ball inside that, a bell, yeah, and then it would make noises as they bat it around. So all here you do is cut that cardboard tube right into some rings and slip them one inside the other. Um, you can glue it together, but just make sure you use like a non-toxic glue uh, if you do it. So the cats really like this. They um, Sometimes I know the shelter here in Lincoln will um, have people who make these kinds of toys so that the cats can use them and then they throw them away. Uh, when the cats get adopted. Here, send them with the cat. Um, another kind of toy you can make out of toilet paper rolls that's kind of exciting for cats, right, is you can just cut the ends of the toilet paper roll um, so it looks a little feathered like that there. Um, and you can also do things like glue um, a ball or feathers, right, again, using non-toxic glue on part of it um, and stick it in there for your cat to play with and have fun. So you can kind of do different things just with a toilet paper roll at home to make a toy for your cat. So um, that's a good idea of some kind of craft you can make for your cat. Um, another type of enrichment or thing that might get your cat excited is catnip. Um, but not all cats like catnip. How many of you guys' cats, let's see, I'll like, put that chat box up. How many guys cats like catnip? The chat box doesn't show very well in here. Um, not really. Um, so um, Natalie's cat likes catnip. Your cat, yeah, love catnip. So about 30 to 50 percent of all cats will respond to catnip, um, and it's actually a genetically linked trait. So we talked um, a while ago, right, about catnip or about genetics, right? And so there's a g actually a gene that some cats have that um, will cause them to be more excited about catnip. But also, um, how excited they are, but it impacts how old they are when they first are exposed to it. And so um, if they're exposed younger, they might be more likely to have a response than if they haven't done anything with it. Oh, somebody, Abigail's gonna do her agri-science project on how cats react to catnip. That's a cool idea. Uh, but there's not any known like long-term effects to catnip, so there's no harm. You know, you can let your cat have catnip and they'll enjoy it. Um, you can do things like interactive feeders. I don't know if any of you guys have these, but these are sort of like the different puzzle toys your cat can have that will help them get food out of it. Um, it sometimes slows down how fast they eat, but also they have to work to get their food, and so. Um, it can be a good way for them to kind of hunt for their food and use those natural instincts and also can have a benefit in preventing obesity, right, because they're not eating as fast if they have to try harder to get their food. Um, 
A couple of you guys mentioned grass when we talked about plants, right? So you can um, give your cats cat grass, right? So a lot of cats will like to chew on cat grass. Um, and so um, you can do that. You can get different grass or parsley will work too. And you can grow it in a container. You can buy some at the pet store. Um, and so you can just see that and then your cat can play with it. Just make sure you have a container that maybe your cat can't knock over as easily, right? Like something flat um, so that they won't make a mess in the house. One thing lots of cats like that's a type of enrichment is watching out the window, right? So I don't you guys have, my cat has a, like sits in the window seat, right? And watches the different things outside, right? So looking at birds or different animals, squirrels, things that are happening outside the window. Um, and so lots of cats like to watch outside the window. Somebody mentioned, um, Natalie said something about having fish, right? I, I know some people will get a fish tank for their cats to be able to watch the fish swim around. Um, and so right, that can be something that they can watch that's a form of enrichment for them. Uh, as well. And so it's sometimes good to have a way for your cat to be able to sit and watch out the window. Um, and then the last one we have is training, right? And so training is a good form of enrichment because they have to really think uh, to learn new tasks. And so there are um, lots of things you can teach your cat to do, um, like different tricks, um, but they're a little harder to train than dogs. They don't have a very long attention span, so you have to do it in really short bursts, um, but you can train your cat. Um, and people can train them for different things like to come or to sit or walk on their leash. Um, have any of you guys trained your cat to do anything? No. My cat kisses on command. You can make But what were you going to say? I've trained my cat to come and sit. To come and sit? He's not very good at the sit part, but he does know how to come. Most not very good at sitting. Attention. My cat can walk on a leash, sort of. We're still Your kind cat of walks on his leash. My cat um, pretends like his bones turn to spaghetti when you put him on a leash. But if you make kissing noises at him, he'll rub your face. So that's how we've taught him to kiss on command. Yes, my mine like rolls over. <laughs> Like, come on, we're gonna go outside. Come on. Exactly. It's like flop. Oh, and Laura, you trained your cat to play fetch. That's cool. I and met with a person before Christmas who taught their cat to do agility, like they go over jumps and stuff. My cat will walk across the kitchen on her hind legs for treats. Cool. Okay, so this leads us to the next worksheet, um, which is that fun at the shelter worksheet. And so for this one, right, the Whiskerton Humane Society has asked you to develop an enrichment schedule for our cats at the shelter, and they're asking you for help um, to fill out the schedule. So we want to use different types of enrichment um, throughout the week. Think about using things that might affect different senses, right? That maybe one day is like something that has a different smell or a taste or um, visual, right? Hearing. So what can we do that maybe would be different um, each day? So I'm going to give you a few minutes to fill that one in. All right, let me know when you guys are finished.
How are we doing? Are we finished up? We need a minute still. Almost done. Okay. Done. Okay, who wants to share what they put down for Monday? Let's get one of the examples of what you guys put your new for enrichment on Monday. All right, what are you going to do, Natalie? Um, toys and Natalie for Monday was going to have toys and then like a cool like puzzle feeder thing. Okay, so what about Tuesday? Does someone have something different than those as options for Tuesday? I had down training and new smells. Training and new smells. Okay, those are good examples. What about Wednesday? What's something we could do on Wednesday that would be different than what we've done so far? Anybody want to share theirs before I let Natalie share hers again? I'm making her wait with her hand up. All right, what's yours, Natalie? You already had those. Pick a different one. What's something we didn't do? I have two. No? What do you have? What did you have for one of the days? Like a lot of petting. So okay, so so petting and like socializing, like playing with the cats. Anybody else have a different one for Thursday? Something different that we could do that's on their list that we haven't said so far? Brushing and catnip. Brushing and catnip. And then um we had for Friday maybe a laser. So that'd be kind of fun. Or clicker training, like different noises. Anybody have like another one we could do on over the weekend, some weekend ones? I do. Okay, what do you got? Weird catnip, a cat condo. Uh, listen to music. Listen to music, that's a really good one. You know, they've like done studies that have shown different types of music are soothing to different animals. And so, right, finding right the right music to play for the cats would be um, you could let a good them, thing. You could let them um, play uh, like those um, games on like phones and iPads for cats where they chase them yeah. off the screen. Some of those cats apps like the games for your cat that they can do on like the ipad or whatever yeah that's another good idea how about cat tv and window watching yep cat tv and window watching so you guys have lots of good ideas today all right so our last section tonight is on grooming um, and thinking about grooming our cat, because hopefully you guys all spend some time grooming your cat at different points in time, right? And so there's a lot of benefit to um, grooming our cat and brushing our cat, right? Grooming your cat and brushing it regularly helps to reduce shedding. And so both long and short-haired cats shed about the same amount. And so um, if we groom them, right, that means less hair kind of floating around your house and around. Um, and then long-haired cats, um, also have you know a lot more likely to get mats or tangles and grooming regularly will help to decrease the mats or tangles that your cat gets in its hair um, and then for those longer haired cats it helps to prevent hairballs um, and so it's a really good idea to groom your cat regularly to help decrease that shedding um, and so brushing it's good for the health of your cat but also helps them to um, look better right like that cool cat in the sunglasses um, and so um, when we think about how often we should brush our cat, right, it really does depend a little bit on your cat. But in general, right, um, 
when we think about it, right, longer haired cats are going to need to be brushed more frequently. And so for longer haired cats, you know, maybe do it every day for a few minutes or at least a few times a week. And then shorter haired cats probably need to be um, brushed at least once a week. Um, and, you know, maybe you do a lot of petting and that helps to decrease the loose fur as well. Um, but your cat can might need to be brushed more or less depending on their hair coat. And also sometimes it depends on the time of year. So in the spring, right when it starts to get warmer, your cat might shed more hair. And so you might need to do some more brushing during that time um, to help reduce that. And so uh, make sure you're doing it kind of um, based on how much your cat's shedding or what they see. It's also really important, right, that we start brushing our cats when they're really young so they get used to being brushed on a regular basis and not get kind of upset or concerned about it. So that brings us to kind of how do we get started with this process, right? So like I said, you want to start brushing kittens when you very first get them. You want to do it at a really young age. The best time to train cats or animals on how to do different things or how to get used to things is when they're really young. So we really want to start early, even if they maybe don't seem like they need it. Um, it'll help them get used to it. And especially with kittens, right, if we do it um, for a couple of minutes every day, it gets them sort of what we call desensitized to it. And so they're not going to respond to it as negatively. And so we do it every day so they get used to doing it, right? Start with using a soft brush, something that's not going to pull at their hair so they don't, aren't bothered by it. Um, and then you can try to use one that's like a detangling or a firminator one to pull out those loose hairs as they get more used to it. Make sure you're being gentle, right? I'm, maybe a lot of you've had your parents, right? Your mom's brush your hair and they're not always the most gentle, um, but try to be really gentle when you're brushing your cat's hair. And then once they've sat quietly and let you brush them, right? Give them treats um, and give them a lot of praise and make it enjoyable, right? Uh, don't keep going so long that they get upset or want to go away. So just do it for a little bit at a time. Um, it's a good idea, like everything else, to start it with a routine for your cat. So um, if you can do like things like have a special place that you're going to do it in, so you have like a grooming station for your cat, right? And you do it kind of around the same time of day and in the same place. Um, maybe you sit in a spot on the couch or on the floor um, while you're watching TV, and then you can just do it while you're doing that, and your cat maybe um, gets used to it. You can pet them and brush them in that spot. Um, make sure you figure out kind of what works best for your cat. You stick to a routine. Um, and make brushing it a part of their normal routine, like that it's not just right before the county fair when you're going to go show your cat that you spend time brushing it and grooming it, but you're kind of doing it on a regular basis all the time, and that'll make it less stressful for your cat. Um, another thing to think about, right, is cleaning your cat's ears. So for a lot of cats, you might need to clean their ears out every little bit, like not all the time, but every once in a while you want to check and make sure they're not too dirty when you're brushing your cat. Um, and so cats can get used to having their ears handled. Again, really starting this when you're young, even if they don't need their ears clean, like handling them and touching them is really important. So you can start by just rubbing their ears um, without messing with them and giving them praise and treats. And then eventually you can use a cotton ball uh, to clean their ear out. Um, but be careful, you know, doing it and be uh, slow so your cat doesn't get too angry if you're doing it. Um, when you clean your cat's ears, um, you want to use a cotton ball. You can wet it with some warm water and just wipe the visible part of the ear. Um, don't really rub it at a whole lot. You can irritate the skin um, and they won't let you do it anymore. Um, and use a cotton ball and not like something you'd stick down in your ear. You should never use like a Q-tip to clean your cat's ear because you can stick it in too far um, and do damage to their ear. So just using that cotton ball, something that's big and loose to swab out their ear um, is important. So one of the reasons, right, it's important to clean your cat's ears is to check for if anything's in there. So um, if there's a lot of buildup of dirt or wax in your cat's ear, um, you want to take them to the vet. Um, this could be potentially a sign of ear mites. And I think we've talked about those before when we talked about parasites, right? But they um, can cause some debris in the ear or maybe it's a sign that your cat has an ear infection. So especially if you're seeing your cat shaking its head a lot or it's got a lot of wax in its ears, when you go to clean them, uh, make sure you take your cat to the vet so that it gets treated right away. And then nail trimming, right? Um, maybe is isn't everybody's favorite thing to do for their cats, but um, it needs to be done on a fairly regular basis. Um, so um, if your cat has all of their claws, you want to trim their nails kind of regularly. Um, one thing you can think about is providing your cat with something to scratch on that will help to wear them down a little bit. 
um, but you're going to want to trim them every month or so um, as well to keep them short, right, so they're not quite so sharp and uh, dig into you if they claw you. So um, if you guys haven't cut your cat's nails before, you can buy nail clippers designed for your cats. Um, and then uh, you want to cut the cat's nail um, in the clear part, or if you have a black cat, you have to kind of you can shine a flashlight behind it to see where the quick is. So the quick is this blood vessel up here, and you never want to cut up here where there's the live tissue, but instead cut down here at the end. Um, and so you just want to trim that tip off um, and not cut up too far; or it'll start bleeding. And so be careful about that. Um, your cat, um, their nails can be sheathed or in retracted in or kind of stuck out. So it's easiest if you do like they're holding it in this picture where you push. Um, underneath your cat's nail and put your finger on top and it'll make their claw come out uh, so then you can see it easier to trim your cat's nail. Yeah, Natalie? They kind of wear them down themselves as they like... Yeah, so they kind of shed the part of their nail when they're, okay. Yeah, it does happen in some cats. You have to let my cat smell the brush first and your cat's nails don't glow, grow very much. Yeah, especially if your cats, um, you know, are outside or different places where they can grind, grind, their, teeth, grind their nails down, they, you won't have as many issues. Um, but I would make sure, especially if you guys are thinking about showing your cat at the fair, that you get them used to their paws being handled so that you can trim those before you go to the fair and make sure that they're clean and trimmed. So um, we want to introduce our cats to getting their nails trimmed. Um, so don't, um, you know, move till they're used to getting handled. So like I said, start with just handling their paws, kind of press down to expose the nails, be gentle. Um, but get them used to letting you touch their paws, right, that they're not fighting with you when you're handling their paws. I'm um, going to do it really gently. So if you guys get a kitten or a new cat, you want to try to do that every single day so they get used to it. Um, and then you can build up to the next step. Yeah. So usually their back nails aren't quite, don't get quite as long as their front nails, but you want to kind of check them every little bit just to make sure they're not too long. Yeah. And so then you can, once you get them used to the handling, right, touch their nails with those clippers, but maybe not clip them. And then you can slowly like clip one nail at a time. Don't get them too stressed out. So they only like to be handled for so long at a time. So maybe just do a couple of nails at a time and then come back versus trying to make them to get all of them trimmed at the same time. Um, and as they get more used to their nails being trimmed, you can do more and more of their nails um, at a time. Um, so, right, we want to be conscientious, right? Not all cats really enjoy being groomed. I saw a couple of you posted that your cats attack the brush when you go to brush them. And so make sure, right, we're starting when our cats are young um, and that we do it carefully, right? Some people might have to take their cat to a vet or professional groomer if their hair gets bad or if a long-haired cat and it's got matted. Um, you might need to do some of those things. But, again, if we start young and we just do a little bit every day or every couple of days, um, it's a lot easier than if we try to do it, you know, like once or twice a year and never any other times um, to take care of our cat. All right, so that brings us to our third worksheet. Uh, so that activity is the pretty kitty one. So now our Whiskerton Humane Society is designing a flyer to give adopters to tell them about how to groom their cats. So circle the correct word in each case to fill in the missing information. So I'm going to give you guys a minute or two to get that uh, taken care of. Did you finish your worksheet? Okay, so we're all working on your worksheet. Let me know when we get them done.
done. We're done. Oh, Adriana's leaving for basketball. Okay. All right. Um, so let's go ahead and let's let's look at those um, answers that we have um, so far. All right. Number one. Okay. So first section is on brushing. So brushing your cat has a lot of benefit for you and her. It reduces sh shedding or happiness. Shedding. Shedding, right. Um, and then it helps prevent scratching or hairballs. Okay. Hairballs is what I heard. Hairballs. Okay, so brushing your Yep, brushing your hair has a lot of benefits for you and her. It reduces shedding and helps to prevent hairballs. Generally, short-haired cats should be brushed at least once a month or week. Week, yep, week would be the answer there. While long-haired cats should be brushed at least once a, a day. Cats can be given... Treats or punishment? Treats. Treats, yep, while being brushed. You guys just shout them out if you've got your things on, your microphones on. Uh, cleaning ears. A cat's ears can be cleaned using some water and uh, what? Cotton ball. Cotton ball, yep. Dry the ear with a, with like a cotton, cotton ball. ball. If there's a lot of dirt in your cat's ear, you should take him to the vet. Yep, take him to the vet. Um, and then trimming your nails. A cat's nail should be trimmed every uh, every month. When trimming the nail, it's important not to cut into the quick. The quick. Yep. Just when just starting to trim a kitten's nails, you sh should or should not. Should not. Should not begin by cutting all the nails all at once. Do you guys have anything else you guys um, think that owners should know about grooming cats? Yeah. What do you have, Natalie? Be so be gentle and start slow. Was Natalie's other advice? Does anybody else have other things that they would say? No. Okay, before we switch back and we look at the next cat club meeting and some other things, one thing I wanted to point out to you guys is the companion animal challenge is coming up. I was hoping that Adriana would be able to still be on, but she's not here. Um, but this um, is a contest that's in March, uh, and it's here in the Animal Science Building in Lincoln. Um, and it has different contests. You have to be 10 or older for each age, so as of January 1st to compete. It's here in this building. We have to be 10. So you can do different things related to your cat, or there's also dog-related contests. Um, but you can give a, dem a demonstration, so like a presentation about something related to cats if you wanted. You can also enter art or photography or other cat-related things there. And so I just wanted to bring that to your attention. If you guys want more information, you can have your parents contact me, or um, you can... Um, contact your extension office or yes you can contact me yourself as well um, so to finish up um, our next club meeting is February 8th and we're going to talk about cat health so a little bit about their body systems and vet care as well as taking care of older cats um, so that's what we able to look forward to in February hopefully we don't have any bad weather that day and then the last thing is to take that survey. Uh, so if you haven't uh, done that survey yet, um, that's a survey for this month's 
So we can um, go ahead and do that before you go. I'll stick that link uh, in your chat box. If the chat box will open again for me. Aww. Seriously, the, now there it goes. It's super slow today. At least this computer works, so I know it wasn't quite as the normal, but there's that link to the survey if you haven't done it yet. Um, does anybody have any questions for me still today? All right, if you guys have any questions, I'll see you guys all next month. Have a good um, bye -bye. month. Bye, guys.